All right, what is going on, my dudes? We're back here today with the next champion entering MCOC. We got Kate Bishop. We have the girl from the show about the guy with the arrow. What's her face? Haley Steinfeld? I have no clue if that's her name, but looks just like her, right? Pretty crazy. She's missing her ponytail here, though. You can see right through her head, so don't look at her from that way. Just look at the front. But yeah, Kate Bishop is here. We're going to jump in today. Going to go over everything you need to know about this new champion, what she could do, which is good for all that fun stuff, how to play her, all that fun stuff, right? So this is another champion that looks deceptively incredibly complicated. There are a lot of colors in here. There's 10,000 words in here. You're, I'm Listen, I'm going to break this down for you in a way where you understand how she works without having to know everything here. Okay, so she is quite simple at the end of the day, and she has one of the easiest rotations you've ever seen in your life. However, she does have a bit of a skill cap if you want to get the most out of her, so she's, she's kind of interesting there. So let's jump right into it today. So, riposte with an arrow. Okay, when attacked by a basic attack while suffering from a stun debuff, Kate has a 100% chance to purify the stun and evade the hit. That's obviously going to be really annoying on defense, but also could be nice on offense for stuff like encroaching stun, kind of like that Mordo ability, right? Now, when you do, do a parry, you're going to like be like Elsa and you're going to evade, okay? This has a small cooldown and it's going to passively stun the opponent for however many seconds. Now, this passive stun goes away when you hit them two times. The reason why is because what you're supposed to do here is parry, dash in with the medium, hold your heavy attack, and push them back, okay? And we'll go over why in a bit, but just keep that in mind. That's why it's designed that way. So she has dialed in passes just like Hawkeye. Okay, they scale up to five with her sig ability. Yes, scales up to five with her sig ability. And just like Hawkeye, she slows down time with her special one and her special two, and you gain a dialed in passive if you do it properly. Now, the way to look out for this, and I'll show you in the actual gameplay, is basically after the first hit, you hit the you you, you touch the block the left side of the screen, and you hold it until you see a little glimmer on the arrow, then you let go. It takes a bit of practice to get the timing down, but once you get it in your body, once you get it in your hands, in your bones, in your blood, it kind of happens every time, right? You can also keep your, your finger on the special button and then take it off when it glistens, but that's like very, very tough to do. You could do it, you totally could do it, but what I like to do is, you, there isn't a set time where you have to touch the left side of the screen, so I like to do it like right before the glisten happens, so I have like one second of slow-mo. That's just how I like to do it, okay? So, um, yeah, that's that's her that's her perfect release. You get the perfect release when you do that, just like Hawkeye. Now, she has trick arrows, okay? Now, these trick arrows happen on her special one and her special two, and she has four of them, okay? Cryo, Tranquilizer, Caltrops, Dissolver. Now, when you use your special attack, this cycles automatically, okay? So, use your special one, it moves from Cold Snap to the next one. However, if you double tap block, kind of like the Mantis ability, right? You double tap block, it'll go forward without having to use a special. Now, she also has a pre-fight ability, and if you were to select, for example, Cold Snap, you won't be able to have the automatic cycling after your special attack, so you'll only have Cold Snap there. However, you can still use the double tap, okay? So, this right here is the bulk of her kit. Use special attacks, get the arrow effect. If you do a perfect release, if you time it properly with the slow-mo and everything, you get an additional effect. So the first arrow effect is a cold snap passive, and you get a critical cold snap if you get the perfect release. The next one is a tranquilize debuff, kind of like how Mantis has. However, you get uh, additional potency on that tranquilize debuff if you get a perfect release from 40% all the way up to 65%. Now the Caltrops passive, it's a real, there should be a glossary here, but there's not. There should be a glossary on Caltrops. Um, but anyway, so Caltrops basically happens on when they dash forward or they dash back, they take instant bleed damage, okay? 3000 instant bleed damage. And if you do the perfect release, it also happens when they use their heavy attack. I like that one quite a bit. And finally, Dissolver puts a fragility debuff on the opponent, all right? Which is going to give you increased critical damage rating and reduce their block efficiency and if you do a perfect release, you get a Sunder passive, which sets their critical resistance to zero while active. So that's going to be good for like Dr. Doom, Killmonger, champions with those uh, those high crit resistances there, okay? And yeah, that's pretty much uh, how it is. Now, when the opponent's back is against the wall, they're 60% more likely to launch a special attack. That's great. And if a heavy attack knocks the opponent into the wall, all of your trick hour effects that we just talked about, they're refreshed. 
You also inflict a crush passive on the opponent, allowing you to hit through their block. Now, since we talked about trick arrows, with her sig ability, striking the opponent's block pauses the trick arrows for two seconds, okay? Also, dialed in passives is going to increase the potency of trick arrow effects by 15%. Okay, so all of this stuff comes back to like the trick arrows. That's what it's all about, right? That's what it's all about. Now, her heavy attack. Her heavy attack uh, knocks the opponent back farther than normal if you charge it for more than one second. You can't miss it. There's an icon on the screen that goes around and you get like a little orange fist. It strikes them back longer than normal. Also, you inflict a tracking debuff bypassing the effects of miss for 10 seconds. Lots of utility in here. You can counter evade with the cold snap. You can counter miss, right? With that, you could turn off all debuffs with two of the tranquilized debuffs. Really, really solid right there. Plus a lot of damage on top of it as well. So all our special attacks also have passive true accuracy too. So our special attacks can't be evaded, right? And the special one, the final hit is a trick arrow. Just simple, simple, simple. And the special two, it simply just um, applies two trick arrows if you do a perfect release. And also the final hit puts a stun debuff passive on the opponent for 3.5 seconds. That's her move when they're hit twice. Now, on top of it all, the special three. If you do the mini game, right, where you hit the, the, the perfect 20% on the five or six star Kate Bishop, that counts as a perfect release, okay? So without the perfect release, you get a cruelty passive, increasing your critical damage rating. And for the perfect release, you gain a precision passive as well, increasing your critical rating. Now, these two passives, they also pause and refresh the exact same way as all of her trick arrows. So what you want to do with Kate Bishop essentially is build up your passives, right? In long, long fights, you want to go for the special three after you have your dialed in passives. But yeah, she could certainly do some things for sure. As of right now, MSD should have an Abyss Collector solo up on his channel. So go check that out after you finish watching this one. But let's start jumping into some stuff. So when it comes to like Battlegrounds matches, right? She's going to be very solid for those with the cold snap. So. What you can do here, right, is we can rush, rush, rush to special one. And you want to go for the cold snap here. I used the cold snap pre-fight, okay? That way it's not going to cycle here. So here we go. Bam, perfect release. I got the critical cold snap. Now, one thing, there is no call out of critical, okay? There's no like critical cold snap call, call out. So you got to watch out for that. But anyway, here we go, right? For the second special one and two cold snaps. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, tap the block twice that way I can get the caltrops because I want the caltrops here that way I can do some extra damage because the tranquilize unless I need it let's say I'm fighting an eye bomb or something like I'm gonna need it there right but here against the stud pool I really don't need the tranquilize I'd rather have the caltrops that way when he does a heavy attack here see he took all that damage and he's dead and he's dead he's flushed right down the toilet another thing you could do is you can rush to your special too I like this for battlegrounds personally if i end up picking up a kate bishop if i end up ranking her up this is probably how i will use her in battleground scenarios i'm gonna just rush 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 to a special two um don't have to worry about like you know pausing the passes or anything um it, it, it turns out to be like around the same amount of damage here like damage over time total right but you get two cold snaps at once right you have the stun i'm just going right in i'm going right in i'm not worrying about like you know doing the charge heavy attack i'm just building my way up to the caltrops here going for the special one now right so i have the cold snap and now i'm going to put the caltrops on there we go right and as you can see he's dead with three bars of power just like the other one he was dead with three bars of power it comes out to be about the same thing right the perfect release timing so here's the special two right we're doing this we slow down time right there wow look at that first try pause when you see that gleam that's when you want to let go, right? So that's the special two. That's the special two. And then for the special one, we're going to go in here. And now you can press the block button anytime after the first hit. But when she goes down, I, I missed it. But there's the gleam, right? That's pretty much how that works. So in shorter matchups, she certainly has the damage to compete there, right? No doubt about it. And keep in mind, that was all class disadvantage as well. So we had like, what, 20%? reduced attack rating right there so yeah definitely really really solid that was with a rank four but if we go for a bit of a larger health pool here we have our red hulk right and here's a little charge we charge back boom 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 right we're gonna go right in and what we're gonna do here essentially is we don't have the pre-fight on i usually don't use the pre-fight unless i really just want that cold snap right for like a double special one what we're gonna be doing here 
is we're simply going to be spamming our special one. That's it. That's all we're doing here against this Red Hulk. We are spamming special one. We are counting his, countering his special one with our heavy attack, right? And look at this. Boom, 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 right into the wall. Crush passive allows us to go right in and we can throw the special one or a combo right through his block. It's really, really nice. We're hitting the block to keep everything paused here, all right? We're still at a full yellow bar. One thing that's actually really nice about her is her block proficiency is actually higher than Dr. Doom. So most female champions have that very low amount of sustainability. She absolutely does not. On top of evading to avoid the parry damage, she also is very tanky on her own so she's very sustainable it's quite solid that's definitely also really nice for battlegrounds and war type stuff right staying alive is always good but as you can see we're kind of doing this consistent cycle of just keeping him in the corner the cornered passive is making him throw his special attacks very very nicely right and now we have all four of our passives on red hulk's down to 80 percent health but now what we're going to do is we're just going to keep stacking them on and now we have all five of our dialed in passives now our big yellow numbers are getting a lot higher they're getting a lot higher right because we have that sunder pass of reducing all crit resistance and we also have the fr uh, fragility debuff increasing our critical damage rating right so we're going along here we probably could have skipped the tranquilize passives or, or debuffs because we really didn't need them but as you can see right that cold snap is ticking for about 13,000 per second and every time he does the Caltrops passive, it takes off about five, 6,000 health, right? So watch, if we wait out a heavy attack here, I'm really not focusing on that. I'm just kind of focusing on, on getting through the fight as efficiently as possible. And as you can see right now, bam, there we go. We're fully rammed up. We have, we, we used eight special ones, right? And Red Hulk is melting. Like it's, it's consistent damage over time and it happens rather quickly, right? So for this type of content, I mean, guys, we're at a full yellow bar still. We're at a full yellow bar, right? And of course, it definitely helps, by the way, that Red Hulk special one is like extraordinarily easy to bait, right? And to counter and to push him into the wall. So this is definitely a very, very solid matchup for her. But at the same time, I mean like full yellow bar. And this was my one and only attempt. Like I, I went in one time and that's it, like done. I, I did one full yellow bar. You know, I don't even think we'd, we'd block the hit like that. Like it's just like very solid for that kind of stuff. You know, now you can go even further with it. So we're going to do a this thing and I'm not going to make you watch it, the whole thing again like we just did. But basically what I'm doing here is things a little, you know, a little different because he's got the rock stacks, right? So what I wanted to do here is I wanted to build up to a special two to place two of my critical cold snaps on thing. That way I could just have that consistent damage over time going. Right, that's what I want to happen. Now that thing is also interesting. He's got the protection stacks and the rock stacks that, that change all the things, right? All that fun stuff he's got going on. But also what I want to do here is I want to pretty much build up the same way. I'm skipping the tranquilize, right? And then I'm building up to a special three. Why? Because I want the precision and I want the, 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 the cruelty. That's what I really, really want here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and drop the special three right after I push him into the wall. You get the perfect release bonus, right? There we go. And now we have the precision and the cruelty. So now at this point, what I wanna do is I wanna go for another cycle of the cold snaps. I, I find the special one is a lot easier to do, but anyway, I went for two special ones in a row. So I put two critical cold snaps on while the critical multiplier is all the way up there, right? So we're doing quite a bit of damage against thing here. And this is like twice the health pool, right? Like I said, Thing is a weird one because he's got the rock stacks and he gains the protection and all that fun stuff. So it's, you know, you know, you know, you know how it is. But anyway, we finished the fight off pretty much just like this around 90 percent health and that's just that's just gonna be it right there right oh and i forgot to mention even the caltrops right it counts as like a passive instant bleed and that's going to take away his rock stacks as well so that's also quite nice facing the wrong way kate what are you doing what are you possibly doing there all right so that is kate bishop pretty interesting stuff right she's kind of like a mix of hawkeye and elsa but like a little bit better right so that's kind of cool um, but yeah, man, that's going to be it for this video. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, drop your boy a big old like. Let me know what you think about Kate Bishop in the comment section below. And make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos just like this. Coming to you in the future, I'll be seeing you around.